All right, so in this short lecture, we are gonna talk about the structure of interpretive talks. And really what we're gonna learn about is what good structure looks like for interpretive talks. So we're gonna talk about, again, the structure of interpretive talks, just looking at the big picture of these best interpretive practices. This talk, we're gonna focus on structure. All right, structure your talk. Um, in this lecture, we're just gonna kinda of talk about these five different points. We're not gonna go into super great detail. The book does a really good job, I think, um, or rather the reading does a really good job at kind of conveying what these are and has some really good examples um, in it too. So I really encourage you to look at the readings um, for this week, because it's really good. So the first thing you wanna do is pow, right? You wanna capture people's attention, right? You wanna capture the group's attention with a provocative introduction. And what does a provocative introduction look like, right? Um, you could ask the audience a thought-provoking question. You could use guided imagery. You could play sounds. You could recite a poem or a quote. You could tell a story. You could show a really cool or dramatic image. You could pull out an interesting or weird prop, right? Something that just captures the audience's attention, right? Um, and in general, like when you're thinking about, hey, what should I use to capture people at people's attention? Um, really extreme stimuli is good. So the things that are very large, colorful, loud kind of stinky smelly things movement and contrast so moving around um, and like contrast and um, you know loud to soft like kind of just changing things um, like unexpected new novel surprising things other living things like people animals and just that kind of stuff really can capture the audience's attention so that's what you're gonna want to do you at first you just, this first thing you got to do this is sequential right um, you're going to capture people's attention um, and then you gotta, you have to have a bridge, right? So, um, what is a bridge? Um, you know, a bridge is basically when you introduce yourself, you establish your credibility, and then you link your credibility or yourself, um, everything that you talked about, um, to the theme of the day. Um, so, right, so what do you do? Like, you talk about who you are, and what you work for, um, who you work for. You're gonna talk about what's gonna happen in the talk. You're gonna talk about where you're going and where you're gonna end up. This could be not necessarily in the talk itself, although you could do that to give people kind of a preview of what to expect um, to kind of prime them. Um, but it's kind of more just like, if you're gonna go like in a walk or something like that too, you, you wanna physically know where you're going and where you're gonna end up as well. Um, how long is it gonna take? Like what what are this, what is this non-captive audience that can leave whenever they want? They need to know what this thing is gonna look like and they need to know how long this talk is going to take. Um, you got to take care of people's basic needs, that kind of stuff. Um, you want to communicate when it's appropriate to ask questions. You want to communicate to what's going to be required of visitors. Um, right, so these are just the different things that you should do kind of in the bridge to the talk, right? So you've captured their attention, you've explained who you are, who you work for, kind of what you do, what the talk's going to look like, you've taken care of their basic needs, you've done all of this stuff. You gotta ask yourself, you're like, what do you do? All right, that's when you start thinking about the body of the talk. Um, sometimes in the bridge too, you wanna have like a thematic statement at the very end to kind of act as a transition um, to the body. But really what the body is, is just what you do with it is you're gonna illustrate each sub theme of your program with different examples, different creative techniques, um, that kind of stuff, right? So you wanna have two to four specific sub themes. You don't wanna have too many more, um, right? So for example, right, so you could have a theme uh, in your talk, let's say, on the livelihood of a Mississippi riverboat pilot that depended on his or her knowledge of the river and its hazards, right? That could kind of be um, the main theme. Um, a sub-theme could be something like a focus on navigation, right? So you could talk about how riverboat pilots need to um, be able to measure depth of the river. They need to know um, how the river changed its course, like that kind of stuff. Um, also, another sub-theme could just be a focus on disasters, too. This could kind of connect to the livelihood. It could connect to um, a riverboat's captain knowledge of rivers and their hazards in order to kind of connect to this main theme, right? So that's kind of what the body does. Um, really, you're, 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 you're conveying what the theme is, and then you're connecting some of these sub-themes or these sub-points that kind of support um, the larger theme. Um, so transitions, uh, you know, basically what these do is just you're moving moving from one sub-theme to the next. Um, so all a transition really is is when you move from one sub-theme to the other that you, you're kind of telling the audience like, hey, this is what I'm doing, but you're not saying like, 
hello audience, I'm going to move from this sub-theme of a focus on navigation to this sub-theme on a focus on disasters. You know, you might say something like, now that we've discussed the ways that um, the focus on navigation leads to intimate knowledge of the river, um, now we're going to talk about focus on disasters. Or you could say something like, keeping in mind the things that we talked about with the focus on navigation, such and such and such and such. Um, right, so... There are different kinds of uh, good uh, kind of transitions, right? So you could use like bridge words or phrases. So you could say like, you know, before, now, furthermore, meanwhile, in addition, consequently, sub subsequently. Um, those are kind of words that you can use to kind of highlight to the the audience. And also if you're writing too, this is just good kind of structure for even writing. Um, but, you know, hi like, tell the audience that you're going to do something different. Um, you might want to ask a question, too. So how many of you have done this next thing that I'm going to talk about? Or how many of you have thought about navigation on a river? How many thought? How many people have thought about hazards on a river or something like that? Um, you might want to use humor. Um, you might want to use a visual or some kind of other prop or aid. You could use a pause, right? You could just stop speaking. Um, use those pauses meaningfully. Um, you might use physical movement. You want to might tell up like a personal story. So kind of you could tell you could talk about a focus on navigation and its importance for livelihood. And then you could take a step back and talk about navigation and your own personal experience, maybe kayaking. And then you could kind of transition to maybe tell another story about a disaster that you faced. And that could be a good transition to talk about disasters, right? Um, so we've talked about transitions. We talked about body bridge, that kind of stuff. Now let's talk about conclusions. So you're going to want to conclude by presenting an inspiring call to action um, or like an inspiring message. And you really want to link it back to the the, the POW in the very beginning, um, right? In, because again, when we're thinking about interpretive talks, like we want to inspire, we want people to act, we want to change people's behavior. Um, and we're doing that not with using these cold facts, but using ins inspiring stories and just well put together interpretive talks, right? So conclusions should have lots of different things. Um, so summaries of theme and sub themes. Um, you know, you could convey like what kinds of activities um, that you could continue, audience members could continue related to the theme. Um, you might want to provoke further action or thought um, in their minds. Um, you know, you want to be aware of the example that you kind of provide. So if you're talking about the ecological health of um, an area, if you see trash, like pick it up, right? So be really aware of what you do kind of um, in your talk and kind of how you conclude things. Um, you know, get further information from the organization, how, how people can get further information from them or the agency. Um, and ultimately you want to leave um, the audience members with kind of a promotion of good feeling about the site, about the agency, the organization, um, whatever you're, you're working with, right? So, but a really th effective thing to do is to link things back to the, to the POW moment in the very beginning. So if you started with a story, you could maybe remind listeners or audience members of that story, or you could finish that story, right? Maybe you could stop in the middle of the story in the POW in the beginning, and at the end of it, kind of like wrap up things, um, kind of almost like bookends on a, on a bookshelf, um, wrap things up um, to, you know, highlight to the, to, to the listeners, to the audience that um, you're done, but also to create a memorable moment for them in which you can really um, integrate provocative thoughts and um, inspirational things at the very end of a talk. Um, so that's how you structure a talk. Um, you're, we're going to go through lots of examples this week. That We have lots of examples of talks this week. Um, so I really encourage you to watch them and listen to them. Um, but really what we learned about is just a good structure for talks. Um, and one thing I didn't talk about too much in this is you know, don't be, uh, don't be too shy about, um, being creative and surprising, right? Um, you know, this, like the POW moment doesn't need to be, um, something that we talked about here. It could be something totally different. It could be something really creative, something that you care about that you think audience members are going to be really interested in, right? And you, that, that that's really going to capture their attention. Um, so yeah, don't be, don't be, uh, don't be shy, as they say. Um, if you have any questions about structure of interpretive talks, let me know. Again, we're going to be watching lots of talks this week. And again, um, you got to practice. Uh, I just said that to say it really at that time. Um, but what I wanted to say was that um, interpretation, as we know, is a mixture of art and science, right? So it's kind of hard to teach 
this stuff and, and really what we need to do is practice and get feedback and you know we'll get good at it over time um, for sure especially when you know more about a resource that you're talking about um, when you get more practice and when you get more feedback um, so thank you again and again let me know if you have any questions <laughs>